Another try. Ooh, one of my favorite starts. Max health for gold. Always juicy. As long as the shop is reasonably located. Hmm. could do this. That's a late shop for a gold start, but it's not bad. We'll get the burning elite out of the way in Act 1. We get a bunch of upgrades. We get a very juicy store with way over 400 gold. Um, we could go for more elites, but I have to commit to that early, and I think that's kind of suicidal. Unless we... Yeah, we'd have to get a good random rare for that. Like, Immolate, or Feed, or Bludgeon. Losing 7 max health makes this pretty safe still. Okay. That's what we'll do. I really like starting with 250 gold. It's essentially going to let you purchase an entire extra relic. One extra uncommon or rare relic or two common relics, basically, for the price. Can't quite kill here. Um, next turn, Bash Strike should do it, though, right? You only block for five. That's right. Okay, not too bad for a floor one jawworm. Always happy with an early anchor. Anger's a free damage card for the clad, something that's pretty hard to get your hands on with this character. Really helps make that early bash feel a lot more impactful, and because it duplicates itself, it's actually quite good against our act boss, the slime boss. we do Ironclad, Silent, Defect, and Watch Your Hangout to Drink. The Relic Bar. I like that. Ouch. Ouch. Bit of an unfortunate draw order there, not much I could do about that. Good potion though, Cultist Potion could be a solve for the slime boss fight, or we can use it in our first elite if it's uh, necessary. I do love me an early headbutt. Early headbutt lets us put any card back on top, letting us reuse our most valuable card, whatever that might be. Second anger is not a bad choice either here. Two angers can be a little out of control. Would never recommend against, say, Guardian. But against Slime Boss, two self-duplicating cards, not a bad deal. What would be my minimum viable damage amount for Lesson Learn to work? Let's see, on Watcher? I think you could make it five. Five damage. If it's going to stay two cost, anyway. If it's one cost, you can make it one damage. Strike does six next turn. Guess I'll do that. Four, four, four. Perfect. There we get the health back. And a third potion drop. Not something we necessarily wanted. Let's see. And I already have a headbutt. Hmm. You know, that's not bad. So, what are my conditions for taking Searing Blow? I think this is a card that many people have just always ignored. Because why would you take a card that does 
so little damage. Sure, you can upgrade it multiple times, but that upgrade isn't that big, right? Plus four? So what? What's the point? Well, the point is, the secret the card doesn't tell you, each successive upgrade is worth more than the last. The first one's plus four, but the second one's plus five, then plus six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. By the time you reach Searing Blow plus 10, the card will do over 100 damage, and you can one-shot elites and bosses alike. Pretty cool. To make a Searing Blow run really effective, my personal strategy is get it early and upgrade it at every single fire for the rest of the run. Just sink all of your upgrades into that one card to make a super powerful Infinity Blade. Ooh, good question. We gotta stress test the website. Of course, of course. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, BaylorLord.tv, our new website, has a... Why can't I spell website? There we go. <clears throat> has a kind of full breakdown of the of the run that's going on. You can see the deck, the relics, as well as run histories of previous runs. Cool stuff. Let's do it. Let's take a Searing Blow here. I like the current potions a lot. Oh boy. Actually, not bad. Kill two? Easy. Glad we rolled really low health on the... on the gray slimes. Actually, the gray and green slimes in this fight having equal health. Even though normally... This is a, a low roll for the greys and a high roll for the greens. It's, it's kind of funny. Actually, talking about greys and greens makes me want to play XCOM, though. Hmm. Uh, headbutt, strike, strike, kills one. Bash strike, kills one. Can't kill one and block, though. So I think we just kill the gray one, take eight. Then we're done taking damage in this fight. Sounds good to me. Wow, and the other card I, I really wanted to see. Uh, I'm shocked we got it immediately. Battle Trance is my favorite pairing with Searing Blow. For zero cost, you draw three. Essentially makes the deck feel a bit smaller. It's a good headbutt target if you haven't found the Searing Blow yet. Uh, but just lets you get to the Searing Blow quickly. Also works really well with Anger here. It's an incredible find. Shockwave's pretty good too, but not as good as Battle Trance, I don't think. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Remove Transformer Upgrade. It's time for an upgrade. Almost always see me taking Remove or Transform here, but in this case, the more upgrades we can stack onto the Searing Blow, the better it's going to be. So now we can upgrade it five times before the Act 1 boss. That's going to be very strong indeed. Let's do it. And this is, like I said, going to be our target for upgrade at every fire. So, plus 1 to plus 2, 16 to 21, more than the first upgrade. It'll go to 27 at plus 3, 34. So on and so forth. Uh, could Searing Blow hit, but Searing Blow, I don't want to, though. I just want to let the cultist potion kick in here. Perfect. Thirty six. Shock. Pretty unlikely that I can. Do 51 next turn with, with no vulnerable. So let's go for max blocking. Block 5 here, hopefully 15 next turn. 
Negative. Uh, give me the Battle France. Okay, it's a bit of a painful encounter, but overall pretty good. So the damage added is 3 plus the upgrade level, yes. And look at this! Look at this! What a first relic to find. Upon pickup, choose an attack. That we start each combat with that card in our hand. Well, guess what? Attack. Put it in the bottle. Just do it. Start each combat with Searing Blow plus two in your hand. And here's an armaments to let us upgrade either the Searing Blow more or the other cards of the deck. This is my I truly my ideal Searing Blow start in Slay the Spire. That is Battle Trance, Headbutt, Armaments, and a Bottled Flame, no less. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> what a blessed seed this seems to be. Even though we have the armaments, I'm going to continue to upgrade the Searing Blow directly, especially since we're guaranteed to get it on turn one. Lantern for more energy on turn one. Now we can play Bash and Searing Blow. Hype. So what I'm saying is if, that if, if, if this run manages to lose, then Searing Blow must truly be terrible. You could draw that conclusion. You could. I'm feeling pretty good about this run, though, quite frankly. Get out of here, you nerd. Oh, no! <laughs> ah! Oh, well. <laughs> That's fine. My face! <laughs> but my face, though. Gosh, that's funny. Ooh. Card draw does go well with the Searing Blow. <laughs> and if we have Bottled Searing Blow, we can end a lot of fights on turn one. And so we only want Brutality for the longer fights. I like it quite a bit here. <clears throat> the more cards we can draw, the better... Uh, the more often we can draw the Searing Blow, the better the Armaments becomes, the better the Anger becomes. More damage. Five hundred gold into the shop. Finally, our starting bonus kicking in here, with toxic egg. That would pretty much negate any downside of the Searing Blow being our upgrade target, because we'll also get upgraded skills. It's not bad. Evolve's kind of interesting here. Drawing more when we hit status cards could be quite useful for the whole run. We're likely to keep the deck quite small because of the Searing Blow, and so an Evolve could cover our weakness to enemies that use status cards. <laughs> We already have a power attack and a skill. Orange pellets for much, much later in the run might be nice. But I think we're in a great position to pick up a Toxic Egg here. We could get an Offering Plus from Slime Boss. I mean, heck yeah. <laughs> 231. It's not enough, right? 162... Five. Yeah, <clears throat> I have to choose between remove and pellets here. I'm just going to remove. 
I really don't think the pellets are going to be useful in too many situations. Could still take the Evolve now if we want to. I'm wondering if two draw powers is too many. I think I'm just going to skip for now. Here's where Evolve could be useful, by the way. Let's see here. So the upgrade will add... Eight more. 34 goes to 42. So we can kill the middle one cleanly. Let's do it. Upgrade the Searing Blow. Play the Searing Blow. Actually, is the best line to take five? Kill the back one. Actually, that might be correct. Take five here. Or seven. Pen nib. <laughs> and an upgraded disarm. Pendant with bottled Searing Blow means we can guaranteed open with double damage Searing Blow, which is ridiculous. Just ridiculous. <clears throat> can we get it set up for the slime boss? Wait, uh, three, four. Hmm. Won't be quite enough damage, but uh, we could. I think I want to go to the event, though, because I'd much rather have a remove or another upgrade, if possible. I don't think we actually want to necessarily split Slime Boss in two on turn one anyway. Yeah, Warp Tongues could happen. There's quite a few interesting possibilities here. Who found this seed? I did. Me. All right, we can definitely go for the donut here. We're we're gonna easily beat Slime Boss. Take the five max. Upgrade the Searing Blow. Can Warp Tongs upgrade Searing Blow? Yes. Whether it's over multiple turns or just the one time, the answer is yes. If I found the Warp Tongs, I probably would have just taken the guaranteed upgrade on Searing Blow. By the way, sweet. Split, nerd. Make it even stronger. The Omega Blow. Bonk. Good fight. Chuckernaut Immolate Exhum. Zoom disarm. Interesting. I'm really not going to need area damage that much. We're also not going to take that many elites. <clears throat> My pathing priority is now to get as many upgrades as possible, barring everything else. I'm going to go for exhum here. At the minimum, we can use this to double uh, Disarm, and there's quite a few other exhausting skills that would be very good. Incredible set of boss relics here. Just, just incredible. Option A, Coffee Dripper. In a world where I'm purely upgrading Searing Blow, this should be a no-downside energy relic for us. Which is pretty dang sweet. 
Just one more energy per turn at absolutely no cost to us. Or the Sneko Eye, drawing more cards per turn and randomizing the cost of all cards, very notably the Searing Blow. I think Sneko Eye would be mostly useful for getting the Searing Blow early, but because the Searing Blow is bottled, I don't think the draw is, of, is as valuable. And I think, especially with all these reduced cost skills we might pick up, like the Zigzoom Plus, I'm leaning more towards the Dripper here. Could Astrolabe transform three strikes into something else upgraded? I think we struggle with our energy efficiency then. See, I'm thinking Dripper over Sneko, but it is pretty close here. I want the consistency provided by that energy per turn. So, our path is the one that gets the most rest sites, plain and simple. And if that path also hits elites and shops, cool. Looks like this. We get four. Four is not bad. Four is, is definitely above par. So I'm pretty happy with that. And we got the extra upgrade in Act 1. So at, at plus five, we're going to be ahead of the curve here. Our anticipated boss is Bronze Automaton. Don't think we'll have too much trouble with that. I'm sure we can kill the Automaton in six turns. So, do we... I think we want the merchant a little bit later, just get a little bit more money. So something like this. There is a three question mark path. I do kind of like that, but I'd much rather visit a shop and remove a card, guaranteed. What events would I even want? Upgrade all strikes defense would be okay. That's just as good as removal. Necronomicon would be a thing, but that's such a such a low chance to actually occur. Also kind of scary with Coffee Dripper. Tongs is not Act 1 exclusive, that's true. Valoran Sky, thanks for that full year of support. So much love. I'd have to use the draw potion here. Actually, no, we should just have a kill here. Actually, I think that means I didn't need to play Brutality. Ooh. Second Win Plus is a nice way to deal with statuses, letting us get rid of non- attack cards and turn it all into block. <clears throat> the more card draw we get, the better this will be, too. And I certainly would take a... Burning Pact. Hmm. The Wind Condition. Oof. Tough. Sheik90, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I bid thee welcome. 25. Strike, strike, will kill there. Let's just kill one. Overkill. I'll play the anger here. Boom. Okay, I'm gonna bump the pen up a bit here. Playing the anger would have knocked it down, ultimately leading me to do less damage total. Or less less attacks total.
You can even get it all the way to nine. Perfect. Shelled Parasite's gonna have a rude awakening. This armament says plus on it, but this says Dark Embrace. And I have a second wind, a disarm, and an exhume plus. So I'm gonna click on the Dark Embrace card. Whenever a card is exhausted, draw one. All the True Grits we see will be upgraded, all the Burning Packs we see will be upgraded, all the Intimidates we see. There's gonna be a lot of reasons to... to exhaust cards here. Cursed. The shop is before the Elite is, and I have a bottled Searing Blow that's gonna do double damage. So this is about the easiest curse for money ever. Sure, I'll do your deal with the devil. Make me rich again this run. Greetings, snake plant. I see that you are a terrifying foe. Or are you? Boop. Got him. Okay, well that went well. Ooh, Paper Frog. There's a Burning Pact, I'll assuredly be buying that. Purity Plus actually looking a lot better now that we have a Dark Embrace. And we can buy the Armaments Plus if we want it. All pretty good things. Currently, I don't have very good ways to apply um, one. Let's go to this regret. Don't have very good ways to apply vulnerable currently is the problem. But I think we'll definitely go Burning Pact and Armaments Plus. Those seem nice together. Leaves us with 352. So we can't afford Purity and the Frog. I do think the Purity is very nice once the Dark Embrace is in play. It lets us kind of delete all of the non-Searing Blow cards. Which has got to be very strong. Was it ever Strike Remove? Because we have, uh... Because what, we have Second Wind to get rid of the Curse? I think with a Burning Pact, it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> Plus, we do like the Strikes for resetting Pendib, after all. I like Purity. Let's let's do it. Let's Let's try the Purity out here. Cool to be able to buy an upgraded uh, colorless card for one. Keep the rest of this cash. Keep upgrading Searing Blow. 42 goes to 51. That's a dead red slaver, even without any uh, pen nib shenanigans. Well, can I call my shots or can I call my shots? Easy. Do I potion? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. That lets me block for quite a bit more. Go brutality. There's nothing to exhume. Armaments to defend. Defend, defend. Give this guy a little boop. A little boop. Here we see the downside of the Purity Plus before the Dark Embrace gets in play. It's just kind of sad. There we go. Hmm. I don't want to take nine. Something like disarm, second win, headbutt. you. 
hoping to use that on the Taskmaster, but we'll see. Yes, good. Could have done that this turn. Wanted to get the pendant a bit higher, though. I guess that wasn't reasonable. Yeah, shouldn't matter. Plus one strength will make our attacks do a little bit more damage. Plus one to the uh, to the searing blow. And I love a shockwave plus here. Five turns of weakness and vulnerable. It's all we ever want. Now the frog would have been good, but I'm pretty happy with this. Fat stack of cash, too. Plus 6 to plus 7 goes 51 to 61. A full plus 10 here. And every upgrade from here gets better than that. We're really starting to... Uh, oh, good relic, too. Really starting to hit our pace here. As we can now kill many different enemies on turn 1. Nice attack, nerd. Not gonna play the brutality here. Beats up next. Eight might even be better, actually, than. Oh, no, wait, this will put it to, to, to nine. Great. Good. Excellent. Second shockwave. Probably not. Havoc. Play the top card in Exhausted. Maybe. Seems iffy. If it hits the Searing Blow, what do we do? Die? I don't like that. I don't think I need two shockwaves either. We can exhume it! Hmm. Interesting. Alright, let's try it. Let's try it. I don't know if that's actually going to be any good, but I like it with headbutt. I do. Good hit. I don't need two, though. Two is definitely too many without a frozen eye. Entrench could be intriguing, part of our late game defense. I think we're just fine relying on the blow for now. Kembler's Brew. Seems pretty good. Use the power potion. All right, this is an actual test of our abilities here. How do we deal with Gremlin Leader? Oh wait, I see how. We ignore the Gremlins, that's how. Just hit him in the face. We've got Gambler's Brew in case we don't draw any damage next turn. Ethical gaming. No kills for gremlins here. You may run and tell the others. 62 plus 14, 74. That'll do it. Er, no, that won't do it. I need the energy potion. But I'll still do it, though. Is there a havoc that could ruin me? No, okay. There we go. Even better. And my math was apparently off, too. Good. Can't let him get too complacent. Warcry is nice with Havoc, actually. Decent with Dark Embrace. 
Don't think I want bloodletting here. Tempting though. We, guess what? Upgrade the Searing Blow, now to 72. 84 on the next one. Oof, so close. Can't quite kill the snake plant here. Let's gamble four. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. 84. Wasn't that 73 plus 7? The snake plant gains 3 block after the first hit. That's the problem there. Plus 10. 98, you say. Bonk. That's all it takes. GG. The power of the searing blow compels you. Ooh, impervious with... With liking to block or corruption with a dark embrace is the question. I think corruption is pretty silly here. Make all of our skills free and exhaust when played. Don't forget we have a toxic egg, so we've been adding skills to the run the whole time. Impervious as a block mechanism for the heart is nice. I think the corruption is also a good block mechanism for the heart. It's the Dark Embrace that really makes this corruption takeable. Despite the, again, taking these powers over uh, other cards that had upgrades. Might seem a little counterintuitive here, but I think it's going to work out for us. Option A, Mark of Pain. Had I taken the Evolve, this would be worth considering. Gain energy every turn, but put two wounds into the draw pile each combat. Interesting. Calling Bell's not bad here. Notably, we have the Blue Candle, so we can exhaust the Curse, which may draw us a card sometimes. It's actually not too bad. Gaining three Relics, one common, one uncommon, one rare. Or double the strength of potions when we hit one potion per combat. That's also pretty good. Sacred Bark. I think both Sacred Bark and Calling Bell are very good here. Both very appealing. Bark could do, like, if we find, say, a Heart of Iron or... Speed Potion could also make the uh, the Sacred Bark really good. Relics that I'd like to hit would include... Charon's Ashes. Any of the boat thingies for free block. Centennial Puzzle would be really good. More card draw. Basically block or card draw, or maybe Bag of Marbles too. Let's take the, the bell. What do you got? What do you got? War paint upgrades two skills. Not too many of those. Could hit the armaments in the battle trance, though. Ornamental fan, if we play three attacks in one turn, gain some block. And the unceasing top, if we end up with no cards in hand, draw a card. That actually makes the purity a bit better. I think the unceasing top could be quite useful, actually. We do get the other armaments upgraded as well. Do you know that we offer channel memberships now? Support the channel directly here on YouTube for as low as $5 a month and get awesome perks like a custom badge and emojis. But most importantly of all, I'll do exclusive Q&As, uploading a video response only available to members so you can hear your questions read in my buttery voice. Click the join button below this video to get started. Back to the video. Not bad, not bad. That also puts us uh, deeper into the relic pool. Oh, look at that. One, two, three, four. Not many elites on this path. 
but I don't think I care much. We just want to keep upgrading the Searing Blow. It is, it is the way. It is the way. Draw. Huzzah. Yeah, I think that top was actually pretty good. Pretty good indeed. This is a fight where it is possible to soft lock if you can't kill more than one per turn. So if, if Searing Blow was the only attack in this deck, we could be in trouble. But because we have Angers, there's no trouble at all. No trouble whatsoever. I'm gonna skip that Cultist Potion. Do I take another War Cry? Sure, one more. But only one more. Until we get a Feel No Pain, at least. I was like, do I play Corruption? Wait, don't overthink it. Bonk. Oh. Uh, all right, then. We have a Feel No Pain now. Oddly, Gambling Chip, not that appealing here to me. Because of the bottled Searing Blow. I do like a second Dark Embrace even though we're kind of limited on energy. I do like card removal of a strike. So I like these two things. Uh -oh. I don't think much of the rest is that helpful. Quebeco to make Searing Blow do just a little bit more damage. Just a little bit. How do I feel about the Finesse Plus? No bueno here. I think the, the Flame Barrier would be a better add if we're looking to add a, uh, a block skill. And I don't think I'm going to pay for a Flame Barrier even, although I will take one from a card reward. Okay, and that's where we're going. Okay, this way. How's it going, Oobla? Hey there, hey there. Hmm. Alright, I'll do it. Backfired a little bit. Uh, do this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Very beautiful. Bonk. Bonk. 
And now, the Ultra Bonk. It's a bit more appealing now, actually. Because we have both the. Now that we have two Dark Embraces, actually, Bloodletting is really, really good. Allowing us to play even more cards on our turn. We're starting to be at the point of the run where a Body Slam would do about the same damage as this Searing Blow. But the Searing Blow has been letting us just end every encounter so quickly that the rest of the deck has barely mattered up to now. Oh, whoops, that's right, I have that thing. Did that to myself. Hmm. Yeah. Not the biggest fan here. Lead is up next. Okay, I think we just take a little bit of damage here. Even when just by playing the angers over and over again in times of times of dire need. Blood potion's awesome. Shrug it off plus with corruption is awesome. It's part of our block plan against the heart. Alright, we're only fighting one elite this act. It's gonna be Nemesis here. Seems good to me. No armor, shockwave, searing blow. A bonk. Not too shabby. this turn, you are. A Havoc to Zoom. Bring back Havoc. Anger. Headbutt the Anger. Havoc, the anger. Yeah. Easy. There's our impervious. 40 block. Easy. I'll just drink this. Back to full. Huge block. Enormous block.
exhaust targets here. Boop. Strength, who needs it? I'll take hit points. And more upgrades to that Searing Blow. 97 for plus 10. Okay, I lied earlier when I said Searing Blow plus 10 did over 100. It's just under 100. Champ Belt would be nice. Apply when we apply Vulnerable, also add Weakness, but we do need that blue key. And I'll fight these nerds for a rare relic. We can just kill one of them on turn one with Searing Blow, guaranteed. So it seems to me like this is a pretty free relic. Not too shabby. Actually, Shockwave here. Take four. Keep the weakness up. Actually, heck it. Money! We're rich again with 650 gold. It seems to keep happening this run. Oh, I could have used the top there again. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> Here I thought I was clever. Transients. This could be an interesting fight for us. Do we kill this enemy or... What's going to happen here? Really depends on when we draw the Dark Embraces, I suppose. As planned, by the way. All as planned. That's not going to be enough. the loud noises when that happens. Absolutely destroyed. Poor transient. GG nerd. GG. A hundred and eleven. Let's take an event. One last. Two hundred and seventy-five gold for a curse? We've actually seen this event this run already. And with the blue candle, heck it. Let's do it again. More money. I want to be rich. Twitch chat. Filthy rich. 938 bucks. Why not, right? This is going to be our last upgrade. 111 to 126. That's a beefy plus 12 searing blow. We're going to be able to kill a uh, spire shield in one hit with this. All right, let the slaughtering recommence. That's right, 126 damage, Searing Blow. Let's go. Let us go. Greetings, awoke note, bloke, nerd, friend. 
Far Cry first. Alright, looks like I'll be using Purity to delete some of these. There's Dark Embrace. A little bit late, but still here. So I'm going to go Dark Embrace. Delete all this. Shrug, Searing Blow. We have to stop drawing, of course, but we're in good position for future turns. With one of the Dark Embraces in play, I think we can even do this without killing the birds, potentially. Unfortunately, the top can't draw me a card here either. Let's see what this draw is. Okay, looking good, looking good. Even better. Probably won't play uh, Brutality here. Ah, well that I'm going to play. That should be enough for the moment. Nothing disastrous in there. Well, hitting disarm on the wrong target could be a little upsetting. Oh, actually, we could hit a bird. Uh, pretty low odds. Oh, easy. Even hit the right target there. Easy. Bonk. That is a good bonk right there. I'll go one more turn. And we even got the pendant to nine, which means we can instantly kill Spire Spear on turn one. Juicy. Or no, it's not Spire Spear. Excuse me. We're going to instantly kill one of these chumps. Get wrecked, nerd. It's not enough damage. Hold on. There we go. Upgrade it. 286. Bye bye. Boop. <clears throat> ah, yes. The Deca boss fight. The Inovac 3. We can just fight one boss on their own for some reason. Candle? <laughs> I checked to see if both Searing Blow and Exum were in the draw pile before I did that. that reason exactly. Give me that. Mm 
Ball. GG, you nerds. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt out the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of this massive turn one damage. You ready your searing blow? Dealing 2168. A realistic hit, quite frankly. Let's go. Got one more upgrade here in Act 4 to give to the blow. Put it up to 142 damage. Like I said, that'll instantly kill the shield on turn 1. And depending on the rest of the turn, could allow for a spear kill on turn 1. <laughs> Pretty stone. There's the bag of marbles. Apply vulnerable to all enemies at the start of combat. I suppose with 938 gold, there's not... A whole lot stopping us. I'm getting silly here. Madness is interesting too, huh? Madness is definitely interesting. We could make a Searing Blow infinite? Give me the bag, give me the bag. Give me the True Grit, give me the Madness. Give me the really good potions, not these potions. These potions. <laughs> Now that I have double Dark Embrace, I will remove Strike over uh, the Curse. Heck, let's take the third armaments too, why not? Seems fun. Anything else we need? I don't think so. I think we're perfectly set up here. Beautiful. Let's crush him. Let's get him. Right, so that's not happening. But killing you on turn one, very good. Very, very good. You get played, you get deleted. Might as well. Put that on top. Good stuff. Unseizing top, I remembered it. I remembered it. Good for me. Hype. I think we actually save health by not playing this. The fight's unlikely to go on for three more turns. Last for three damage per turn shouldn't matter much. Cultist Potion also shouldn't matter much. I think we just take max health here. Could maybe take one of the skills, but it doesn't matter. If you mirror a Searing Blow while having the Molten Egg, Myrtle says you do not get an extra upgrade. Interesting. I actually didn't know the answer to that one. That is nonsense. Nonsense, I tell you. All right. Monsieur Heart. Let's go. Mono a Harto. My six block per turn, that might help a little bit. This turn one is good enough with disarm here. Of course, we max out damage with searing blow in one hit. What's there not to like? Oh, and feel no pain. Great turn one overall. I could do something like exhume the disarm and keep going, but that's a waste of the disarm. Double disarm during the first phase is not helpful as the part will purge negative strength soon enough so I don't think I want to try to use the top or anything let's just allow the turn to go okay looking good headbutt and headbutt the searing blow played again not that much damage now that we're weakened though Trying to find 
I could upgrade it twice. Hmm. That sounds hilarious. Oh, actually, get the pen nibbed. Excuse me, never mind. Not that much damage in my butt. Look at this. Let's put this on top. Damage cap both turn one and turn two. That's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm just going to play Madness. All right, fair enough. Really wanted that to hit the corruption. It's fine. Can't draw anymore because the battle trance. So we'll have to take a little bit here. Cool with that. All right, there's our dark embrace. You're late. Shockwave's right on time though. That's a good second win hand if ever I've seen one. Get him out of here. And we'll just delete everything that we hate. Everything in the draw pile, pretty much. None of this really matters. Blunkening. GG, Mr. Hart. Get absolutely dunked on. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.